My soul is longing and yearning for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out to the living God. And let's begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace for our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. If we move into this third week of Lent, let's just prepare ourselves to meet our God in word and sacrament. Take a moment of quiet reflection, look through our lives for those blessings we've received from God and offer thanks. And let us also seek forgiveness for the times we have been sinners. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners to redemption. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May your unfailing compassion, O Lord, cleanse and protect your church. And since without you she cannot stand secure, may she always be governed by your grace through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Be seated. Listen to the word of God. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman, the army commander of the king of Aram, was highly esteemed and respected by his master, for through him the Lord had brought victory to Aram. But valiant as he was, the man was a leper. Now the Arameans had captured in a raid on the land of Israel a little girl who became the servant of Naaman's wife. If only my master would present himself to the prophet in Samaria, Samaria, she said to her mistress, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went and told his lord just what the slave girl from the land of Israel had said. Go, said the king of Aram, I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman set out, taking along 10 silver talents, 6,000 gold pieces, and 10 festal garments. To the king of Israel, he brought the letter which read, with this letter, I am sending my servant Naaman to you, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When he read the letter, the king of Israel told, tore his garments and exclaimed, Am I a God with power over life and death, that this man should send someone to me to be cured of leprosy? Take note, you can, you can see he is only looking for a quarrel with me. When, when Elisha, the man of God, heard the king of Israel had torn his garments, he sent word to the king. Why have you torn your garments? Let him come to me and find out that, that there is a prophet in Israel. Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. The prophet sent him the message, go and wash seven times in the Jordan and your flesh will heal and you will be clean. But Naaman went out angry saying, I thought that he would surely come out and stand there to invoke the Lord as God and would move his hand over the spot and thus cure the leprosy. Are not the rivers of Damascus, the Abana, and the far, far, far better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash them and be cleansed? With this, he turned about in anger and left. But his servants came up and reasoned with him. My father, they said, if the prophet had told him to do something extraordinary, would you not have done it? All the more now, since he said to you, wash and be clean, should you do as he said? So Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. He returned with his whole ret retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. The word of the Lord. Response is, a thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? As the hind longs for the running waters, so my soul longs for you. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? 
A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Then I will go to the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then I will give you thanks upon the heart, O God, my God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I hope in the Lord, I trust in his word. With him there is kindness and plenteous redemption. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus said to the people in the synagogue at Nazareth, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent but only to a widow in Zarephath, in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built, to hurl him down headlong. But Jesus passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Today the church celebrates the feast of one of many, St. John. This is St. John of God, uh, who was uh, born in Portugal, um, ended up in Spain. Uh, where he became a soldier and uh, really traveled with the, the, the emperor's army all over uh, Europe. He was born in 1495, um, so the, it was an exciting time. The New World had just been discovered. Um, Spain, uh, at that point, uh, had just uh, gained its, uh, uh, I don't know if I'd call it independence, but they had uh, reconquered all of the, the Spanish territory and drove the, the Moorish leaders back to North Africa. And uh, the, the Spanish emperor um, began uh, uh, his, uh, his work both in the New World and uh, dealing with the other powers of, uh, of Spain. And that was the, the situation in which uh, John found himself. Um, he did this for a long time and lived the life of a soldier uh, with all of the, the good and the bad things that that entailed until finally he, he uh, decided he needed to do something different with his life. Um, uh, he underwent something of a religious conversion uh, under the Catholic king that wasn't uh, unusual, um, but decided that he had been uh, worthless in what he had done. And so uh, decided that the best thing he could do would be to go off to Morocco uh, to try and convert Islam and become a martyr. Um, uh, he wanted to be a martyr for the faith because he didn't see that there was any, uh, any goodness in him that could do anything. 
and others, uh, including his, his spiritual father, uh, told him otherwise. Um, St. John of Avila was that, that uh, spiritual father, another St. John, lots of them in the church. Um, and he convinced them that, uh, uh, you know, do something you can do, um, care for people. And that struck a nerve with him. And so he uh, started caring for the sick. Um, he apparently had learned, uh, you know, at least field training and stuff in the army for dealing with the wounded and carried some of that with him to this. He ended up starting a hospital and caring for people there. Um, he died young. He, was, uh, uh, he died in 1450, uh, 1555, I guess. So he was only about uh, 60 years old when he uh, passed away. But uh, he had collected folks around him to join in this. And 20 years after his life, um, after his death, uh, they organized themselves in the religious order, the order of hospitalers, and uh, ended up opening hospitals around the world. Um, in, in one sense, really one of the real beginnings of uh, organized ministry of healing uh, in the church and continued to this day. Um, it's kind of appropriate that the uh, uh, feast this year falls on, on this Monday with this reading of uh, Naaman the, the Syrian, um, uh, because this story, it's one of the great stories of, of the Old Testament, um, you know, goes to be cured of his leprosy. The king rends his garments saying, who does he think I am? Does he think I'm a god? Like these other pagan uh, fools, I, I will not do this. And Elisha, the prophet with great faith says, send him to me, we'll show him who God is. And then gives him a task, uh, obeys in the Jordan seven times. And it's just infuriated him. You know, he says, well, do we not have greater waters than the, the Jordan River, which isn't the big, massive thing flowing through there. Um, he said, there are not the, the, the waters of, of uh, Syria much sweeter than these? Why, I bathed there Why I've never been cleansed. And he's going to go home. Uh, in a huff when, when his servants come to him and say, you know, if he told you to climb a mountain and slay a dragon and carry back the, you know, the, the tooth of a dragon and present it uh, to the high priest in the temple, you'd have gladly headed off in that quest. He told you to take a bath in a river, hit a beach. It's easy. What have you got to lose? Uh, and he does so, and, and it says, you know, his, his, his skin was made uh, like that of a newborn. Um, uh, John of God and, and Naaman uh, both challenged to do something uh, they knew how to do, something that, that didn't, didn't risk life or limb for them. Um, uh, and, and it paid off at big time. Um, and I think there's, you know, something for us there as well that uh, the things we've been blessed with, the skills we have, the knowledge that we've accumulated and such, um, may pale in comparison to others. And we, you know, in the last couple of years, we lost Stephen Hawking, a great, great mind. Um, and, and all of us, uh, I think I can say without uh, fear of too much contradiction, all of us in this room say, well, that guy is a lot smarter than I ever was or ever will be. Uh, and yet, um, God said, what you've got is enough uh, to teach children, to, to educate them in reading, writing, and arithmetic, and perhaps most importantly of all, to come to know their heavenly father and their heavenly mother. Um, uh, Yesterday we had the, the story of the Ten Commandments. Uh, and we had Jesus cleansing the temple, um, defending that law. Um, God gave us those ten laws, none of which are all that difficult. Um, and yet, uh, we put them together, they cover pretty much every aspect of our lives that we need covered. Um, if you want to know how to become holy, how to become a saint. It's not 
uh, and a, a quest against dragons and mountains and, and booby traps and everything that we see in those wonderful adventure movies. It's living the life that God is after to live in his law and in his prophets. Um, most importantly of all, uh, just to come and know God's love and share that with each other. Uh, there's nothing more powerful than that. Gather our prayers and bring them before our God. Begin with a prayer for peace in our world. That God send his spirit of peace to the minds and hearts of all men and women. This we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the church in gratitude for God's word, God's sacraments, for men like uh, St. John of God, uh, Teresa of Avila, uh, who help us to come to know God. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for our country, as that God bless those burdened with governance with his wisdom. And God protect all of us uh, in this time of pandemic, and that God very specially watch after those who are charged with our safety. We pray to the Lord. Lord yeah. Pray for the repose of the soul of Jerry Colligan and Jerry Allure, uh, who've been so uh, instrumental in their lives uh, uh, in our, our ministry of Catholic education here in the Grand Traverse area. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord yeah. I pray for the repose of the soul of my friend, uh, Marcel Moline, um, or uh, Martina, his wife, and Tom and Nikki, uh, his children, is, uh, uh, that they may be comforted and that uh, he may be resting with God. We pray to the Lord, Lord yeah. for your intentions. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. In these times of tension, let's pray for kindness. We pray to the Lord. Lord yeah. Loving God, we come before you, bringing you our hopes and desires. These few we've given voice, others we hold silently in our hearts, but all of them we offer to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our brother and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. It is the fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord just sacrifice the church. Praise the Lord, the King. For our faith is lost, for church. May what we offer you, O Lord, in token of our service, be transformed by you into the sacrament of salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have renewed your children a sacred time, given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts. They're freed from disordered affections they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you 
is without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, once up was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Bishop Walter, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Jer Jerry, Jerry, and Marcel, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Francis, St. Elizabeth, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, let's raise our voices in the prayer given to us by Jesus himself, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
Well, praise the Lord, all you nations, for his merciful love toward us is great. Let us pray. May communion in this your sacrament, we pray, O Lord, bring with it purification and the unity that is your gift. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May your right hand, we ask, O Lord, protect this people it makes entreaty to you. Graciously purify them and give them instruction that finding solace in this life, they may reach the good things to come. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.